When your wife said, it's over, I'm done, there's no chance, and I am no longer in love with you, you made a huge mistake hearing those words. The mistake you made is that you believed her. Josh, if you were there and you saw her, it is the coldness in her face, in those words. It is something I've never seen before. She meant it. I get it. You felt devastated when you heard those words. But the mistake you made was in fact the way you responded and the way that you believed her. And don't get me wrong, pretty much every single husband, when they first hear those words, they make the same mistake. But what Adam did differently is what I'm gonna show you today. And the three mental habits and things he did after he heard those words is what got his wife back only four weeks later. If you felt to understand exactly what Adam did with these three things, not only are you gonna for sure lose her, because I'm telling you, there still is a chance to get her back, but also, if you do decide to go on to the next woman or next relationship, but I don't want you to focus on that, but if you do, the same process is gonna repeat. These mental habits are inner shifts you make within yourself to get a completely different external result. So let's jump in. For the majority of men who have their wife really leave them, move out, see another man, ask for a divorce, you would think it's some giant betrayal that caused the dissolution of the marriage. But oftentimes, it's not that at all. It's death by a thousand cuts. And what happens is this tipping point occurs where you imagine that on one side of the scale is all these positive emotions. And in the beginning of the relationship, you guys had a lot in this emotional bank. But over the time of years of just every single time you were complacent, you didn't choose for her, you didn't lead, you became emotionally reactive, you shut down your emotions. That disconnection was just little tipping scales, like just little negative emotional investments on the scale until eventually there was one that broke the camel's back of divorce. And that's what happened with Adam. Now this emotional tipping point scale can actually be proven scientifically. Studies will actually show that the successful and happy marriages that last a long time have a positive four emotional experiences to every one negative. If it's too many negative, you go two to one, one to one, that's when the tipping point occurs where you become the villain in her life instead of the hero. But even too many positive interactions where you're trying to avoid conflict constantly is making her lose respect for you as well. Once Adam was able to make these positive emotional investments with the three things I'm about to tell you, well, all these things happened. In the four weeks you've been in it, like what, what has been some improvements or changes that you've seen so far? Not just maybe externally with the relationship, but also internally in yourself. The way that I communicate with people, everybody, had crippling anxiety without even realizing it. I have bit my nails since I was a kid. I haven't bit my nails in two and a half weeks. Um, I, I quit drinking. Now, when I say quit drinking, I quit drinking for a month and a half two months. Um, I quit smoking cigarettes. I, I don't, ha I don't crave that. But the biggest thing for me is just how I respond and talk to people being able to slow down and analyze what I'm in. I give her a lot of credit because she didn't give up on me. She moved back in for two and a half weeks ago. Let's say three weeks ago, she moved back in. Um, she was staying in her parents' house. Appreciated. That's appreciated. So two or three days after she moved back in, she gave me a gift. That's actually in here. I can, I'm not going to take the time to pull it apart. But for April 18th, she got me. We went to Narrisburg, New York. And when I opened the box, I said, you're going to Narrisburg, New York. And then the next thing was, you're staying in this cabin. Then the last thing was, there's this and this, this to eat here. I was like, oh, okay, uh, cool. Thanks. That's nice. And the last, the last little piece of paper was two adults, one dog. I looked at her. I was like, is that us? She goes, yeah. So we went up there. The one night turned into three. We started Airbnb hopping, doing all of these things. The sex came back. The 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 emotion was there. It was like literally at that point, the, the, the switch went the other direction, only with more, with more power than I've ever flipped a switch before in my life. The first mental habit that Adam used to win his wife back was context transference. Mastering this one technique of context transference will skyrocket your results with your wife on autopilot. I hear so many men say, this exact thing. You know, Josh, I, I don't get it. I, at work with my employees and the people I work with, I'm, I'm confident, I'm unreactive. I listen to their emotions. I am, if I could be that way with my wife, I wouldn't be here in the marriage. Do you find this for yourself as well? And why do you think that is? What if you possess all the skills already in your psychological makeup and all you had to do was just put a different mask or a hat on with your wife and use the skills that you already possess? Think about this. This is a huge epiphany for a lot of men that 
You don't have to learn anything new. You're just learning how to apply the skills you already have to a different person in your life. For example, myself, when I was in college, there would be girls that I just didn't really care much about. They were cool, but I wasn't really attracted to them. And I was carefree. I was funny. I was confident. I was relaxed. Everything I needed to do to get them to like me more. But as soon as I had that one girl where she was a crush, and I was like, oh, she's different than every other girl. I romanticized about her. I put her on that pedestal. I didn't think I was around her. I was frozen stiff, didn't say a word, didn't make the funny jokes, didn't do all the cool things that I would normally do around most women. So what happened? She didn't see who I really was and there was no attraction there. And then one day, one of those crushes I had after class, I built up the courage to go talk to her and ask her on a date. And she said that she's seeing someone seriously now. And if I didn't wait a couple of weeks and I asked her before, it would have worked out. So I went home like, why am I doing this? I want to figure this out. Why am I not able to be my best self around someone that I actually really like. When I was searching online, I found this technique from neuro-linguistic programming. And I was able to do this visualization exercise where I was able to remove the anxiety and the fear and shed that layer of insecurity and become my highest value self whenever I wanted to. This is the same exact process I use with Adam and every other client I work with, is that we really, what I call externalize, or we clearly solidify and identify that highest version of yourself, this total confidence in who you are. And then we're able to apply that same framework into other situations where you're not able to do that with your wife. This simple mental switch in yourself. I mean, words can't even describe how powerful it is. But as important as this first mental habit is, it'll be pointless and useless without this next habit. The second mental habit that Adam performed was guided forgiveness. Now, when I say forgiveness, a lot of men, they think they know what forgiveness means. I'm not saying that I do. What I do know is that I can, after thousands of hours of working with men, I can tell when a guy says he forgives his wife versus this underlying tone of resentment still harboring in the tone of his voice. Just check out what Adam said on forgiveness. The first thing that I did was I had to forgive myself for allowing myself to tell myself that that is okay and to treat myself that way to then in turn make her feel how I was acting, allowing myself to act. That was very, very difficult because everyone always says, oh, forgive yourself. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, sorry. And that's what I thought it was. Once I was able to do that, it unlocked a lot of things for me. Now, the other day when I was running a group call on the Marriage Mastery Program, I was talking to the guys about a really deep internal topic. And this is a very advanced, nuanced topic that I'll never really share on this channel because it might go over a lot of guys' heads until you come into the program. However, one of my favorite quotes is that the deeper the wound, the more universal it is, right? So what I found through this group is that I had the guys, they were in a safe spot with other men, okay? And they were able to clearly define what is that one whisper in their subconscious voice that's preventing them to have success with their wife. And you'd be shocked, pretty much every guy there had a similar shade of the same saying, which was, deep down, I don't deserve my wife's love. This voice that's saying you don't deserve her, the first step is becoming aware of it. And if you are, that's actually a good thing. But the second part is truly understanding how to change it because let me tell you, I've been doing this for a very long time. And I can tell you that no matter what communication changes you make, what external changes, you start coming home from work earlier, you start changing all these things in the external of improving yourself for the marriage. If that voice is still sitting there in the back of your head, that, that devil whispering that you don't deserve love, that you're not good enough the way you are, it'll find subtle ways to sabotage it all, make it all fall apart. And forgiveness is a way to erase that voice. Here's how Adam did it. How I did that was I literally said, I'm sorry for what was inside of me. That was what the apology was coming from to the person that was standing there trying to convey to her that this is love. I'm doing this because I love you and want love from you, but this is how I'm doing it. So I apologized for that part of me feeding this part of me horrible information and, and, and ways of crushing the one thing that I love more in this world. So that was how I was able to apologize to myself. Man, I love that with Adam. Such brutal honesty. I love that. Let me give you one final metaphor. I love my metaphors here, right? On forgiveness. I want you to imagine that every time you, you did something, right? Or your wife did something to you, there are strings on the back of your head pulling you to the past, these anchors pulling you back. 
And every time there is a new fight with you two, immediately those strings get pulled and you're guided back to the past. And when you're focusing on the past, using past emotions, actions, and thoughts, you're gonna replicate the same scenarios to occur every single time. However, if you find a way to cut off that string from the past, what happens is you're able to move forward towards the new future with your wife that you truly want, that you do deserve. Now, the tool of forgiveness are these scissors and your ability to use them is the context transference. The ability to find them is point number three. Now, the third mental habit that Adam used is what I call eudaimonia exaltation. Now, eudaimonia, I know it's a long word, but it essentially means the condition of human flourishing. And the opposite of that is hedonism or hedonic lifestyle, which is immediate pleasure and wanting to avoid pain. I can consolidate this whole entire mindset with this clip with Adam. Pretend that I just met her. Amplify everything inside of her. Allow that to be me. I can forget everything else. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So take all of that and make it better from right now. And if I make her better, she's going to in turn make me better. And that's exactly what's happening. All right, let me explain this whole mindset with a story I recently heard. All right, I want you to imagine that I lost my keys, okay, in the dark in my house. And my lights went off in the house, so I cannot turn on the lights and find my keys. I am struggling to find them and I'm spending hours on this and I cannot find my keys. And I have to go rush to a date with my wife. She's there waiting for me and I am tripping out. And then I see a light on outside, a street light. And I get the bright idea to go outside and look in the light. So I go out there and I start looking for my keys outside under the light. And then you see me searching on the floor and you're like, hey man, like what's up? Like, what are you doing? That's what you ask me. And I say, well, I'm just looking for my keys. I lost them. And so you start looking with me for these keys under this light and you say, well, man, I don't see them. Like, where did you lose them? And I say, well, I, I lost them inside the house. And then you ask me like, idiot, why are you looking outside under the light? And I said, because it's dark inside. The light's here. And even though you may think I'm stupid, if we're looking for the keys for this answer to connect with my wife outside, it's exactly what you've been doing and what so many men do. How many times? Have you looked for answers to saving your marriage outside of yourself? Whether it's the man really blaming his wife's bipolar or her narcissism or any other mental condition or her abuse and trauma growing up as a kid, or it's her family, her sister, and all these other people influencing her, it's her therapist influencing her. If I could change that, or if I can just change the way she says she criticizes me, I won't become defensive. When you are looking for answers to fix your marriage outside of your power, you are no different than me searching for those keys in that light outside. The answers are within you. If you are able to change that pattern within yourself, you will find the answers and you will save your marriage. I wanted to thank you. I wanted to thank Mr. Blackburn. Antonio, top notch, super, super good. Quick, quick to respond. No bull doesn't sugarcoat anything. I really appreciated that out of him also. So I got a lot from you guys and your program, and, and, uh, and I want to say thank you for helping me get to where I'm at now. If you want to see how Sean got his wife from seeing another man to getting her back saying, I'm sorry, check out this video right here on the screen. And always, the link down in the description will give you the opportunity to set up a call with my team. Now, I'm going to say that for setting up that call, you must be clearly ready emotionally to invest 100% into saving your marriage because we do not take every single applicant on the call, only guys that are ready to commit to saving their marriage. It is not basic free information. We want men who are ready to take action. So if you're ready to take action to saving your marriage right now, then click down below to set up a call. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.